guys, it's Ann. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. We get a friendly community of helpful people here, so always check down in the comments for additional tips and tricks. Today is the day that I am going to harvest, fluff, and feed my 55 gallon worm bin blue that I made out of an entire 55 gallon food grade barrel by screwing it together on the edges. I do have a video for that if you're interested. So today's subject is going to be uh, tips for worm bin success, but what do you consider success for your worm bin? In my mind, it is healthy worms, getting lots of castings, and then they also eat my garbage. What do you consider to be success? So first of all, you know, how do you ensure healthy worms? And honestly, environment and food, correct temperature, moisture, and substrate. So I'm going to continue to talk as I'm going through the bin here. I'm going to try and get a bit of a harvest today. I'm not going to be able to sift, mostly because I can't find my sifter. But I am going to skim off the top of this finish end over here. That's a problem when you use the sifters for multiple, multiple things. Uh, you tend to leave them in multiple, multiple places. Or I do. I'm not one of those people that, you know, everything's got a spot, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, can't do it. So I'm going to probably take out about five gallons of castings here. Not a whole lot considering what this bin is capable of. I am already running into some worms here. So we're just going to continue skimming off the top instead of going deeper. But the goal is to get me some castings so that I can dry them out and have good sifted castings for my bonsais because it is getting to be tropical bonsai potting season. So I need to make sure that I have some high quality, finely sifted castings available to me in the next month or so. All right, that's good. That's probably about five gallons. So how do you ensure healthy worms? Well, the environment and the food, of course, and included in the food is the bedding, which is just another form of food. A lot of people think, you know, do I need something of a... Uh, a permanent bedding that they are not going to eat. No, that's not what you need. You need something that is going to basically keep everything nice and fluffy like this. Shredded cardboard, shredded paper, shredded um, coconut coir. I've seen people use uh, like cedar chips, like what are used for bedding for um, guinea pigs and such. I've also seen people use pellet stove wood pellets that basically turn into sawdust. Basically you need a nice fluffy substrate for your worms to hang out in and also eat eventually. And some of those beddings are fast beddings. Fast beddings would be the, the shredded cardboard and paper. They can eat that very quickly. And then you've got the slower kind like the wood pellets and the wood shavings that will probably take six months to a year to to break down, whereas I can usually expect the paper and cardboard to be gone in a couple of months. So when we're talking about temperatures, it also depends on what kind of worms you have. In this particular bin, I have reds, euros, blues, and I did put some of the African night crawlers in here, but quite honestly, I'll never know because uh, they look awfully similar to blue worms when they're um, younger. So, but in theory, I have all of the worms in here that normally is what you buy. And one of the problems with that is that the red wigglers and the European night crawlers do very good in colder temperatures, all the way down to near freezing. And then also they do well up to about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, when we're looking at the European night crawlers and red wigglers, that's great. They do well pretty much year round. They slow down in the summer when it gets very hot. Right now it is 81 degrees in the basement and 70% humidity. Completely unprecedented. I've never seen this here. But then your red, your European, mm -mm, nope. The African night crawlers and the blue worms are tropical worms and so they actually do a little bit better when it's warmer. In fact, they can't handle it when it is cold. Oh, there's my cork. And 
So, you know, they are, you know, African night crawlers will flat out die, you know, below 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And if any of them do live, um, I would say they're not going to be producing any castings for you and they're not going to be breeding. The blue worms seem to bounce back every year in the summertime. So at the very least, I know that if it gets super cold here in the basement, they're at least leaving cocoons that allow them to bounce back in the spring and summer. The African night crawlers, however, once they get to very, very cold, they're done. There's, I have yet to see any cocoons come back. I had them originally in the basement here. It got down to about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And even when I left it for about six months, hoping the cocoons would come back, they did not. So for moisture, most things, most of the worms, the adult worms, if your goal is to just feed them and maintain the population, they're usually good at about 60% moisture, which is about what this is here. But if you wanted to really kick the breeding into high gear, you're gonna want to make that about 80%, which is very, very muddy. But it just depends on what your goals are. Then when we're looking at food and availability, a lot of people talk about wanting to have the worms eat the food faster. Well, unfortunately, you know, they're only going to eat as much as they can eat. And so what really is a better idea is to look at the long term amount of food that you have available to them. So it's actually kind of a good idea to have fast food and slow food available to them so that it is in varying degrees and different stages. Oops, little worm ball there little worm ball. Good worms! So anyways, varying stages of decomposition so that it's ready for the worms when they run out of their fast food. So fast food is more along the lines of things that they're going to eat inside of a month or two and slow food is something that is going to take them four to six months or even a year. And you're looking at avocado pits, I think we have an experiment going right now with the red wigglers. How long does it take them to eat the avocado pit? So we'll see, but it is a slow food. Anybody saw the picture of the, uh, the puppy? Uh, if you hear barking. Okay, yeah, I, I hope uh, that was an unplanned stop. But basically what I'm trying to say is for food, you're going to want to make sure that they have a variety of food that will take them a short amount of time and a long amount of time to get to. So we're getting to the part here that was probably put in place three months ago. Not seeing a lot of food. Still finding some of those Leica balls. Probably going to be finding those for a year. Okay, so then another thing, you know, other than food and environment, you know, keeping the bedding nice and fluffy. I mean, this is an artificial environment, yes. The worms out in the wild are not exposed to this level of disturbance, but this is an artificial environment that we have to make sure to keep aerobic because the worms will not uh, be happy and could possibly die in the event that they are kept in an aerobic situation. So we want to make sure to, in order to stay successful, keep the worms alive and eating like we would like them to, we do have to keep things nice and fluffy. So, you know, as far as the environment goes, you know, what we're looking at is keeping them the right temperature, the right moisture. And then also when people are new to worm farming, they tend to peek on them a little too often. I know I totally did and that can stress them out which can cause them to want to flee and then probably die and then also not reproduce or eat as much as you'd like let's move down to the business end of the bin okay here we go put a little bit of packing paper down there and let's get them a little bit of food about a gallon and a half of tomatoes and avocado green beans all kinds of stuff that's left over, you know, in the garden when you're cooking. And then let's get them a little bit of bedding to go on top. Like this is going to be some slow food, whereas the tomato chunks are gonna be fast food. 
by the time that they're done with this, they can go to that, and that will keep them happy for the three and a half weeks that I usually go in between feedings. They also have quite a bit of food here left over from last time, where there's the bedding, the strips of cardboard that we fed last time. I don't see any of the pureed food left, but basically they've got enough to work on here for at least another week or so before they need to go down to this end. Get them another four gallons of bedding. And for anybody who is new, honestly, you can never overdo bedding. They will always have something to eat if you are gone on vacation and don't get back in time, or if you get sick and you can't get down to the worms to feed them. Always having extra bedding on them is always a good idea. And that is really the top tip for you guys to make sure that your worm bins are successful. If you like this bin, there's a whole playlist you could watch right over there. And if you've already seen those, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day. And for those of you who are still here, if you wanted to know why I was wearing gloves, um, my big dog uh, helped me run into a tree. Eh, it might be bro it might be broke. I don't know. Gen X. I'm walking it off.